At All American Print Supply, it's no secret that we love direct-to-film printing, but there's no such thing as a perfect process. We're here at ISS 2024 Long Beach Convention Center where the entire industry is gathered under one roof. Come along with us as we take on a survival guide tour for tips and tricks on how to avoid some of the most common mistakes when it comes to DTF. All right, wouldn't be a trade show without stopping by the STS booth. We are joined by CTO of STS Inc., our good friend Shahar. And what would you say to someone, what advice would you give for new direct to film users who are having color accuracy issues where the print's just not matching the file? So there's a couple way you can uh, review the file. It's one of them is basically you need to check what file you're working. If it's a PNG or PDF or EPS or AI, and to check it basically if it's a spot color, or is a RGB color. So when you take a file and you export the file uh, from Photoshop or Illustrator to PNG, make sure you use transparency. This is number one. Number two, you, can, you need to check that embedded ICC profile, embedded ICC profile when you export the file, not just fast export. Embedded the ICC profile to the, uh, to the file and make sure you save it as, a, as, a, as RGB. You basically go to the properties, make sure the properties is matching the RIP software, oh, yeah, okay. and then you can you can print, you know, what you see in yeah. the screen. When you go to the EPS file and you have spot color, every RIP software have a spot color replacement. So the spot color replacement is much easier to work. Okay, okay, if it's PMS color. So if it's a PMS color, you can do calibration. It's quick calibration. Take about 10, 20 minutes to do calibration, and you're good to go. But that is it, yeah. DTF common mistakes, not UV DTF, the regular direct to film. Wanted to ask you, in your experience, what have you run into or seen maybe beginners with direct to film as far as maintenance is concerned? Our printers auto clean, but you still need to do some level of maintenance, and that is kind of forgotten. Guys, if you're thinking about getting into direct to film, partner with someone who's gonna give you warranty on your product and after purchase support. Yeah, we cover everything. We have training sessions throughout the week. I personally do a Friday training session, so if you guys wanna join, it's mostly on the Prestige J4, but I'll be there Friday if you guys wanna check it out. All right, we got forever in the house. Woo woo, how we doing, Chris Godfrey? Man, I am doing really good today, bro. I'm having a good time at the show as always. Loving the crowd, loving the people, loving the energy. And I love that you stopped by to see me, man. So in your experience, what mistakes have you seen artwork-wise that customers are using, maybe not as a direct to film, with any kind of this digital printing? Oh, oh, there are so many, so, so many, I will say. The number one is taking someone else's artwork that you have to really stay creative. You don't want to go to the most popular websites pulling artwork from that because you really want to stay in your own lane and be different from everyone else that's out there. As well as not knowing how to half tone your items, how to make sure that pixelation is right on there. You're gonna go from your printer or your computer and it's gonna look beautiful. But once you print it out, it's gonna be pixelated. It's gonna be down in resolution. You need to make sure you understand how to use things like Adobe Photoshop, or things like even Canva to help enhance the quality of your image overall. Had to stop by the Epson booth, check out my boy Paul Morales. Fun fact, Paul, and I don't know if you guys know this, I actually learned direct-to-film printing on an Epson DTG machine. Really? That's cool. Oh, pretty awesome. What's really cool is the new Epson 1070 that's coming out very soon. At that killer price point, we're gonna see a lot of new users diving into the hybrid direct-to-garment, direct-to-film printing space. What could you share with our audience maybe looking to get started running a DTG DTF printer as far as powdering? Anything they should be aware of? Yeah, well, the most important thing is you wanna do that in a separate area, keep it away from your printing technology. So buy the heat press and your curing oven makes the most sense. Okay, fantastic. I mean, I think we've both seen kind of sometimes if you're powdering on the platen near the machine, why would they never wanna do that? Uh, you wanna keep it away from the machine at all times. It's a separate process. So keep things separate, keep things simple, smart, and clean. Paul, thank you so much. Absolutely. Oh, man.
If you made it this far in the video, congratulations, you're the grand prize winner of a wealth of knowledge when it comes to common mistakes associated with direct film printing. Let us know in the comment section down below what issues you've been running into, whether it's your printing, your powdering, your curing application, you name it, we should have an answer for you. If you haven't done so already, go ahead and hit that red subscribe button. We have a lot of fun here, weekly updated content, and drop a thumbs up. We got a lot more to see and do here at the Impressions Expo. Make sure you guys stay tuned for more. See you soon.